Uh, my name is Spyro. Um, I'm a Birmingham City fan. I'm a local boy. Uh, grew up around this area. This place has been home to me ever since I was a young boy. And I've always loved coming here growing up. And I've been a season ticket holder since I became an adult, going to mo every home game and most of the away games. And I love coming here and always love coming here. You're all the way there. <laughs> I can't get rid of you. Uh, I love this place, what can I say? So you're going to show us where you grew up, yeah? Yeah. There it is. This is the spot. Yeah. This is the spot. This is where I grew up. I'm walking past, I used to see a lot of big crowds of people uh, walking down the streets wearing blue scarves, blues hats. I, I just really wanted to know what it was about. And as soon as I was old enough and I was able to go, I went and I had the best time of my life. Because I finally got to know what the true experience was. I get told all the time uh, by Blues fans, we're always here for you. Uh, Blues fans, they look out for me all the time. Um, the time where I got toned with the racial abuse, I had so much support from Blues fans yeah. saying, uh, sorry you went through that, they had my back. Um, there was, has not been one time ever where a Blues fan has uh, made me disappointed or made me feel sad. They've always been there for me. And I know there'll be people in Birmingham as a whole and in the local area who, despite being as close to the stadium as they are, yeah. will pick a different club. Yeah. A Man United, an Arsenal, a Chelsea. Yeah. What do you think you've gained from actually following your local side? I've gained love, I've gained, I've gained a massive experience that they can't follow. I'd say the reason why they have gone to other clubs is because they haven't actually experienced what the Blues is actually about. Um, well, I think what if they did, or if they had that guide to take them, or if they had that motive to go, I feel like if they actually experienced it, they would have be true Blue Noses. And for me, I could say that I could support my local team because this is where I grew up. This is literally in the same area. The stadium is in the same area where I grew up. I'm happy I support them. I, I couldn't have chosen a better club in my life. So growing up in this area, there's a majority Muslim area. And obviously when I've come to this club, I haven't seen many Muslim supporters, maybe because they support other teams or they haven't had that experience that I've had coming to the Blues. But one thing I can heavily say is whenever I come to the Blues, everyone's very respectful of my beliefs. They know I don't drink alcohol, so they would never offer me alcohol if they know who I am. Uh, they're always asking me questions out of um, interest, with respect which I'm more than happy to answer. I've, I've had people wish me a good Ramadan already and this Ramadan's next week. So it just goes to show the community of Blues, how respectful we are and how we appreciate other people's values. Yeah, it's like um, a unity with Blues because it doesn't matter what colour you are, what religion you are, you support Birmingham City, you're a Blues fan and you're together, you're part of that community. So uh, this is my local uh, supermarket growing up. I used to always go in here get my biscuits and my chocolates <laughs> and my sweets because um, these have, always have halal harem bowls in there and um, if you go to like Tesco or anything, not, you, never, you never used to have that back in the day and this is where I used to go get my groceries uh, whether it's my dad or with my mom or my aunties this is where we used to go it was my prime location to shop and uh, as you can see by the wonderful display of fruit I used to always get fresh fruit the yellow mangoes, the Pakistani mangoes. Oh, the, the mangoes. The when you cut when you cut that up and oh. it's on your plate at home and you start eating it, oh, it's a different type of experience. Another thing as well, the watermelons. Yeah, bang on. The watermelons, the most succulent watermelons ever from here. Location of where everything used to happen. You got the stadium here, where I grew up here, all the shops here. Everything I used to do was mainly surrounded upon this road. So, always a pleasure seeing this sign. And then you just turn the corner here. And at the destination I'm always happy to walk into. Never once been sad to walk in. I just get that wave coming at me. I just get that wind behind me blowing me in saying just get right in there. What sticks out to you is the moment that you said, wow, this is something special. Well, I would say when Davis scored, it was because it was a sold out crowd. Filler? Yeah. yeah. When Davis scored in 2016 17 season, when we was 1 0 down, and he just uh, kicked it right into that goal. To oh, and then react. everything just it's went from electric to just super. 
those limbs, those moments, um, I'll always remember them. I was actually sat in uh, block th uh, 31 that game. Uh, I, I must have fell over like two rows. I must say I had a very bad leg that day. But it was all worth it because you're just living in that moment. Um, that's a very meaningful game that is. And for us to score that game and equalise, everyone got happy, everyone was there, everyone was cheering. No one sat down. Everyone, every, everything was rocking, I remember. Even walking in. If you just walk in, you already feel it. You can already feel the tension as well. And away from home, you must have some memories already. <laughs> Quite a few, to be fair. I'll tell you, one that happened recently was Sheffield United away. Because I was right at the front. And um, when Deeney scored, it couldn't have been more perfect because as soon as he scored, he came straight in front of me. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of us just jumped over and celebrated. And I uh, looked Sanderson like right in his face. And we just shouted, come on, to each other. Oh, that, oh, I haven't had that experience away ever until then. Another one was a Swansea when we were like 3-2 down. I've never seen a, a win like that when we were 3-2 down in, in the 90th minute equalised and then 97th minute winner. I had very bad times like this that day as well. And I, my, I was getting told by my family to not go. They were telling me not to go. It's not worth it. Got up nine in the morning, about half eight, nine in the morning, and I went. I got on the coach like, oh, why have I come? And then, in the afternoon, when we scored and made it 4 3, I was like, it's worth it. Did miss a fair bit of the game because I got taken in the ambulance because I couldn't breathe, but I was let back and I was able to see those moments. So I was happy I went in the end. I think um, when you're away from home especially and you've got that couple of thousand people, doesn't matter how far you're travelling, like whether you're going Norwich or Sunderland, you're there, you ha you're out there for a good time, you're supporting your club. And it doesn't really matter like, oh, how, how many numbers you bring, at the end of the day, you're there and you're, and you're there in the spotlight. And I'm happy that I've got to, I had an opportunity to share my journey and my story uh, to people and where I've, like where I've come from and now come in here, giving an insight on my, some of my experiences. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure holding this. That's what day that was. 2011, over Femi Martins, putting the ball in the net. One of the closing minutes. Absolute honour to hold this. Yes, teams must be something in my lifetime. It means a lot. And now we're on to the next. We're on ambition to create another one. No, it's your holy month coming up, so I want to wish you Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you. Everyone at Blues. Thank you so much. Keep right on. Keep right on.